Hello, my name is Bernhard Schwetzler. Welcome to my video blog, Questions of Doubt in Corporate Valuation. And the question of doubt that we're tackling today is WAC and target capital structure. Shall we take gross debt or shall we take net debt? So when looking at the classical um, WAC equation, then you can see here, as the name suggests, the WAC is the weighted average over the cost of equity and the after-tax cost of debt. And the weights correspond to the target capital structure of the firm that you have to assume for the valuation. And the question now is, shall we take for these weights, shall we take the gross debt as suggested here by this equation, or shall we take the net debt, that is the difference between the gross debt and excess cash and financial assets on the left-hand side of the balance sheet. When trying to tackle this question, we should take a closer look on the free cash flow definition that is behind this DCF WAC approach. Yeah? So as you can see, we start here uh, in the P&L uh, and our accounting surplus that we rest upon is earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT. And it reads before interest expense because, uh, of course, we are in the entity approach uh, of corporate DCF valuation, but it also reads before interest income. That means that this is the naked surplus of our operating business and no surplus from any financial asset is reflected in this figure here. And that, of course, does not change as we go down here to our free cash flow. And that means that our free cash flow does not contain any benefits or any surpluses that are generated from cash or any other financial asset on our balance sheet. And that already answers uh, our question because uh, if we here line up our values, then you see that by discounting the free cash flow with the WAC, we calculate the operating enterprise value of our business. Um, and you see here that we, if we would add uh, our cash position, then the sum of the two would be the firm value. And on the right hand side, you see our capital structure and market values, the value of equity and the value of debt. And as you can see that um, our corresponding liability side for the enterprise value is reflecting the net debt, that is the difference between the gross debt and the excess cash. Eh? So what we actually do or what we should do is that we cut off this part of our market based market value based balance sheet by netting out excess cash and gross debt. And we can do so first because the value of the of this block is equal to zero, the value of cash, excess cash is equal to the value of the corresponding debt. Second, the risk properties of these two net out to zero. So if properly chosen, for instance, if we invest the, uh, the cash into riskless cash, then the beta, the asset beta is equal to zero, whereas riskless debt, of course, also carries a debt beta of zero and that nets out to zero. On a perfect capital market, the interest income that is generated by cash is equal to the interest expense that is paid for the corresponding debt. So this nets out to zero. And finally, even the tax treatment of the two components is corresponding. We need to pay, if we take corporate taxes into account, we need to pay taxes on our interest income, but uh, the interest expense is tax, de tax deductible. So in any respect, in every respect, these two here, these gray shaded area, nets out to zero. And so we don't have to care in that sense for it in the corporate valuation of our operating business. And so then that means that uh, our capital structure that we apply on our enterprise value is equity plus net debt. Okay? And that already answers the question. So if this WAC is supposed to be the correct discount rate for the free cash flow generated uh, by the operating assets of the firm, then these are the weights that we should take into account. Yeah? So you see in the nominator, it's the enterprise value, equity plus debt minus cash, so equity plus net debt. And if we look at the weights for equity and especially for the weight of the debt component, it is then the net debt that is to be taken into account. 
The question is now, is there a way to save the gross depth approach for the weights? Yes, the answer is yes, there is. But then we would have to leave our classical DCF uh, WAC model because if we would take gross depth and firm value in the, in the nominator for the weights of the WAC, then of course the corresponding cash flow also should be the cash flow that is generated by all assets, not just by the operating assets. And that would mean that if we go back to our cash flow definition here, that if we would like to take a WAC like this, then we would have to add to this cash flow definition the net interest income generated by our financial assets because then it would be the weights would correspond here to the firm value and then the cash flow would also be in that sense the cash flow generated by all assets that reflect the firm value thank you for today